Well, good morning. I want to thank the praise team and musicians for leading us in worship. I realize that this morning that often I stand and I thank them for what they do, but I forget that there's another side of what they do that's up in the balcony. Uh, and I want to thank the guys that are up there this morning uh, for making sure that words are on the screen so we can he so we can see them to sing. And I want to thank them for running sounds so that everything is good. Uh, and I want to uh, just thank them for that and thank the band and, and John and his team for leading us this morning. That song, last, next to last song that we sang, Waymaker, uh, has kind of become an anthem uh, in today's time, uh, in the culture that we live in today. Uh, people are wearing it on shirts. They're uh, singing it. It's, it's everywhere. We, uh, we think about it as being a relatively new song. Uh, but actually, the song was written a few years ago, and uh, it's just been rewritten and recorded uh, in this time frame that we're dealing with now. But as I think about the words to that song, and I think about Jesus being our way maker, I think about Him being the, the one who, uh, when, when we think there's no way that He's moving, He's moving. He is, he is everything that we need. He directs our path. He leads us along the journey that He would have us to go. Uh, as we're going through all of the, the stuff that's going on in our world today, we've got the COVID-19 pandemic, we've got the racial divide uh, and the racial reconciliation that's happening, uh, and, and we, we look to God to be our way maker during that. When we get those test results that we weren't expecting for, we're looking for God to be our way maker. When we get uh, that news from our job that we weren't expecting, we're looking for Jesus to be our way maker. And that's exactly what He is. He's our miracle worker, our promise keeper. He is working all things together for the good of His children who love Him, who are called according to His purpose. And what a glorious day that it's going to be when we get to meet Him and encounter Him one-on-one. -on -one. But until that day comes, we know that we have the promise that He is our way maker and our miracle worker. And just like the last song that we sang, it's tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Jesus, that is our way maker. And it is so sweet to trust Him, to trust Him more. And so I thank the band for leading us. As I was preparing this week, I thought about the fact of how blessed and honored I am to be able to follow them. And the reason that I think that way is because this group, I know they're hard and I hear them, and it's easy to get here and, and do what I do because they've led us to a place where we're prepared to hear from the Word of God, where we're prepared to hear what God has for us. And even as I stand here and I speak, most of the time God is teaching me as well. And He's teaching me through His Word. And so I, I'm thankful for the opportunity to do that. And as we've been doing over the last few weeks, we've been allowing people to share their story uh, and how Jesus has changed their life. And we want to continue doing that today. And we've asked uh, Perry Wall to come. Uh, many of you know Perry. Uh, Perry and his wife Bobby have been going to Mount Pisgah for at least two years. Uh, they've joined uh, in January, February last year. Uh, and so uh, Perry teaches the Bible Sunday school class. Uh, and Perry is going to come and share this morning. He's going to do things a little different. Uh, we didn't record a video. Uh, we talked about that, and, and, and Perry just really felt like the Lord wanted him to share right here on stage about Jesus and how, he sh how He's changed his life. So, Perry. Are you nervous, brother? Because <laughs> he doesn't know what I'm going to say. I want to thank the band for giving me the introduction that if you don't believe God is working and working all the time, follow me in my journey with my God and how He has changed my life. When I was of school age, I had heard of God. I'd been to Sunday school. I'd been to church. I'd been to vacation Bible school. I had read about God. I'd read the Bible. I had read the uh, Mason, the little pamphlets that you give out to young kids uh, 
uh, coloring books or story books. And as far as a six-year-old could go and could understand, I believed in God. From the starting of school through the 12th grade, I was blessed. I was blessed. School work came easy to me. Athletics came easy to me. Relationships came easy to me. And when I got out of high school, I had a lot of friends, more than a few girlfriends. And I was doing pretty good coming from a lower middle class family. So what I did was I put up a, a chain link fence. And I said, Lord, I believe in you. I thank you for all your blessings, but I'm doing pretty good on my own. So you stay on your side of the fence where you can see me and I still know that you're there, but you know, just leave me alone. Then I was blessed again. So God keeps working. I got an athletic scholarship to Birmingham Southern College. I got to college, and Birmingham Southern is a liberal art college. So you, you can't just study your major. You have to study a little bit of everything. So I took a foreign language. I took geology. I took astronomy. And because it is a Methodist-based school, I had to take a religion course. As I went into the religious course, the Pa the, uh, uh, he was a pastor, but the professor, he took the first four or five lessons and he took the inconsistencies in the Bible and he took cherry picked scripture and he was pretty much telling us that the story of God was a fairy tale. People started dropping that class like crazy. They didn't want to hear this heretic. But I stayed. The problem was I was beginning to get interested in it. Well, finally, he turned it around the last half of the course, and he explained what he was doing, and he preached us the Word. But he said, you see how people can influence you. So always question things. So I did that. I started questioning. I read the Bible, and I questioned things. Well, then I was blessed again. I married Bobby. Next year be 50 years. With her support and her guidance, I was baptized in my late 20s. Then I did what Christians throughout history have done, I took a chair, I set it in the corner, and I told Jesus, go sit there. I was doing okay on my own. Well, I, in, in my searching for the Word, I kept looking. And God's free will let me do that, question the Word. But the Holy Spirit gave me answers. And after a while, I said, this has got to be true. This has got to be true. So you see how many times God kept working in my life? And you see how many times that I have strayed so to change my life is an understatement. Now I'm going to end with two exact facts that I know are true. Number one, I'm a work in progress. I'm not there yet. I'm a work in progress. And number two is I love my God and he loves me. Thank you. Thank you, Perry, for sharing uh, this morning. It's always amazing to me how God prepares. Uh, Perry and I didn't talk about what he was going to 
talk about. And I don't know that Perry knows what I'm preaching about today. Uh, we didn't really discuss that. But one of the things that Perry mentioned was influence and people having influence on his life. And that's where we're going to be today. We want to talk about influence. The influence that our life can have on the world around us. And the influence that other people have on our life today. And so I want to again thank Perry for sharing his story uh, as he did this morning. Uh, if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, I would ask that you open them to the book of Acts. We're going to continue our journey through the book of Acts. We're going to be in chapter 5 this morning, uh, and we'll be looking at verses 12 through 16. Uh, as Perry said this morning, are we not all guilty of putting up that fence and saying, God, I got this. I don't need any help. I got my career on, on, on where I need it to be. I've got my family where I need it to be. I need to know that you're there, and I need to be able to see you, and I need to know that you can see me so that if something happens, you can step in and intervene. But we put up that fence. We put that chair back in the corner for God to sit in so that He's not an active part of our life, but instead an inactive role that just becomes part of our daily living. Uh, and it becomes a part of who we are. And so thank you for that reminder, brother, this morning. Uh, as we, again, get to Acts chapter 5, and we'll be in verses 12 through 16, uh, I want us to see uh, that we are, are our, our influence has so much direction. Our influence has so much impact on our life. Remember last week, we saw that Ananias and Sapphira, who were husband and wife, uh, they sold their property and they did not tell the truth about how much money they got because they were keeping some for themselves. Uh, and, and we saw what happened to them was that they died an earthly death and we hope that with a relationship with the Lord that they went on to spend eternity with, with God in heaven, with Jesus in heaven. Uh, but we don't know that for sure. But as I shared last week, we as children of God who are professing believers have the opportunity to know that if we have professed our faith in Jesus Christ and we have a relationship with Him, we are going to be born twice but die once, because we were born physically and we were reborn spiritually to die a physical death and spend eternity with Jesus. However, when we do not do that, when we do not profess a relationship with Christ, we get to look at another side of that where we get to be born once because we were never reborn, but we get to die twice. We die a physical death but then we'll eternally experience a spiritual death. And so today I pray that if you've not trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you would do that this morning. But this morning I want us to realize that we have so much to do with the temperature of our culture. We have so much to do, our, our influence has so much to do with what's going on around us. And I want us to look to God's Word this morning and see what that means. If, if we take a stand for Christ and really live out the influence that He's called us to, we will be a motivation. However, if we do not speak up, church, our influence can be missed. And I'm afraid that that is what has happened in the world around us today, that we have missed opportunities to be an influence on the world around us because we've been too fearful to stand up to the opposition. We've been too fearful to oppose what was being taught in the media. And so this morning, again, if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, open to Acts chapter 5, and I'll be reading verse 12 through 16. I'm reading from the ESV. Uh, you can follow along on the screen or in your Bibles. Verse 12, Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people. Remember, uh, Peter and John had gone to the temple, and they had healed the lame beggar. And there were many more miracles and wonders and signs that were happening that gave them the influence. It says those were being done by the hands of the apostle, and they were all together in Solomon's portico, or the court of the temple that belonged to Solomon. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. 
People were afraid of what was going to happen if they became a part of that group. They, just like us, were afraid of the opposition that they would encounter if they began to become people who were preaching and teaching the gospel of Christ as well. Now, verse 14, And more than ever believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all here healed. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much this morning. God, for the influence that we see in the life of Peter. God, that people would want his shadow to fall upon them. That people trusted that just the shadow of Peter could heal them, God. And could heal the afflicted and the wounded and the sick and the lame, God. Because of the power that they saw that he had through you. God, I thank you for the power that you give even us today to have that same kind of influence if we'll live it and if we'll allow you to be that ultimate influence, God. Lord, thank you again for your word. Speak to us today. Teach us. It's in your gracious and loving heavenly name we pray today, God. Amen. As I was preparing this morning or, or this week for today's sermon, I kept thinking about what was said back in verse 15. It said, As a result, people brought their sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on them. I don't know about you, but I don't often think about the shadow of a man healing somebody or the shadow of a man being powerful enough that I could feel the presence of Jesus when they walked by. You see, the temple area uh, in Jerusalem covered about 26 acres of land. And on the eastern side of the temple, the court of Solomon, or the portico of Solomon, the apostles were gathered and they were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ there. People knew that Peter would be passing by on his way to the temple in order to encounter that worship. And there was a limited amount of people that he could touch. They knew that as Peter was walking in, that there would be crowds and that he would not be able to physically touch each one of them. And so they thought to themselves that it would be better for him to just have the shadow of Peter pass by and fall on them so that they would be healed. The fact, this fact made me think about the influence that Peter had that he didn't even realize. He didn't even know that these people were they, there so that they could just be on, in his shadow. And church, what it made me realize is that I never understand, never comprehend the full impact of the influence that I have. But church, you have the same influence. As I have influence as the pastor at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church, we as believers, people who claim to have a relationship with Jesus, also have influence. Take away my title as pastor. I am a believer in Christ Jesus, and I have influence. Church, you too have influence. And most of the time, we don't even realize it. But I guarantee you that you have much more influence over your family than I do as pastor at Mount Pisgah. You have much more influence over your co-workers than I do as pastor at Mount Pisgah. You have much more influence over your neighbors than I do just because of my title. And this morning, I want us to realize what our influence can do. It can either make a positive impact or it can make a negative impact. Church, I hope that we want to have the same kind of influence that Peter had. An influence where people trusted so much in the power of Jesus through his influence that they just wanted people to sit in his shadow. And so in the balance of the time that I have left this morning, I want us to see three things about our influence. I want us to see three things that our influence can do. Number one, our influence can outlive us. As we've been talking about influence and as Perry was talking about the influence of his professor in college, I guarantee you, Perry, do you know for sure, is that professor still living today? He could be, he may not be, 
But one day, if he hasn't already, he's going to pass away. But Perry is going to remember the influence that that man had on his life. Church, our influence will outlive us. Do we want to have a positive influence that outlives us or a negative influence? We could spend days talking about the people in history that had an influence on our lives. Peter is not the only Christian in God's Word that has been remembered for thousands of years for his influence. Some of these people, like the apostles, we know, while others that were there, we don't often hear a lot about them. Either way, their lives influenced other people. Long even after they died, Peter is still an influence to us today, and he's long been gone, but his influence outlived him. I think about a lady who was in the church that I served at when I was in college, Shiloh Baptist Church, and I may have shared this with you before about her. A lady named Annie B. Rouse. Annie B. was this sweet little lady. Uh, Her stature... Uh, Jeanette Giles' stature reminds me of Annie B. Rouse. They were about the same size, but Annie B. was one of the most powerful spiritual influencers that I have ever encountered in my entire life. Whenever there was something that we needed and we wanted to pray about, we as a staff would go to Miss Annie B.'s house and we would say, Annie B., We need you to pray for us right now, but we need you to continue to pray because we feel like you've got a direct connection to the Lord. And I remember those days sitting on the porch at Annie B. Rouse's house and her praying what seemed like the perfect words over the staff that were chosen to lead her. But church, even though we were pastors at her church, I would venture to say that she had much more influence on our lives than we had on hers. And she didn't have a title. She didn't have an office or, or anything like that. But she was an influence. And today her influence has outlived her because I still think about those days. I still think about the times when we sat on Annie B's porch and listened to her pray and know that she was going to continue to pray for us and continue to pray that God would lead us in the direction that we needed to go. Who do you remember that fits that mold for you? I would venture to say that every person in this room has someone who spiritually has impacted them, who has left an influence, a mark on their life. And although that person may no longer be living, they had a great influence over us. So church, know that our influence most of the time will outlive who we are. But secondly, our influence can bring destruction. The influence that we present can bring destruction. I know that when I just asked the question about who was an influence in your life, you probably wrote down some names or you had some thoughts that went into your head of positive influences. We don't like to think about the bad influences. But church, there are people in our life who have been negative, that have left a negative impact on us. In a sense, a a person doesn't die when they die because their legacy lives on. Even though we have an end, a beginning date and an end date, what happened in the middle lives on beyond our death date. And church, we can either have a positive legacy or we can have a negative legacy. The influence of their life can linger on. Automatically, when we think about people who bring destruction, we go to people like Hitler or to Stalin that had destructive influence in the world. And they still have an influence on many people today because we think about we don't want to live in those kind of days anymore. We remember what happened in the concentration camps and the people who Hitler had killed and the massacres that Stalin took place in. And we don't want to think about that. We don't want to live those days. And so those people have left a negative impact, a destructive impact, influence in our lives. But even the man after God's own heart, David, had some destructive influence in his family. 2 Samuel 12.10 says this, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite, to be your wife. 
Church, I pray that my mistakes do not have long-lasting influence on those around me. But most likely, they will. People will remember the mistakes that I make in my life. But I pray that the good that comes, the, 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 the good for the name of Christ is what is really outlives me. For those of you that grew up around terrible influences, it's not an excuse for you to do the same thing. We can break the cycle. When I was doing student ministry and we had a lot of students who were coming from broken homes and homes that families had never gone to college and they were involved in drugs and alcohol, my my student committee would often ask me, why are we continuing to go and pick these kids up? They're they're just coming here and they're, they're not acting right when they're here. But church, we had an opportunity to be the change makers in their lives. We had an opportunity to let them see that they didn't have to follow that same path. That just because their family was like that didn't give them an excuse to be like that. And thank God we still have an opportunity through the ministry that Mason and Beth have to minister to some of those families like that. And that is the reason that we do it to help them realize that they can break the mold, to help them realize that they don't have to live in the influence. They can change that path. What are those things that you do not want to be known for? We all have them because before we were saved, we were sinners. We don't want to be remembered by those things. We want to be remembered for what God has done and the change that He has made in our lives. Third thing that our influence can do is it can bring victory. Our influence can bring victory. Romans 5.10 says this, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. Church, the life of Jesus brought victory. And we can have that same victory through a relationship with Christ. The influence in your life that should be the most important to you is the influence of Jesus. What Jesus did on the cross and the resurrection from the dead can change the outcome of any person's life. Oftentimes we hear people say, I can't go to the church until I get things right. We're never going to get things right apart from the saving power of Jesus. So church, we need broken people here. We need lost people here so that they can experience the life-saving power, the life-saving victory influence of Jesus. The influence of Christ has to be the most important. What Jesus did on the cross and the resurrection from the dead can change the outcome of any person's life. When you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in all that you do, you will be an influence to people that brings victory. Will you allow God to use you? Will you allow God to let your influence be one for victory? The apostles and the Christians were healing people and leading people to Jesus on a daily basis. We don't even know the number that were added because there were so many. It said more than we could even count were being added daily. Those Christians have no idea how many lives that they changed. But generation upon generation upon generation were changed because of their faithfulness to God. They allowed the victory of Jesus to change who they were And they let that influence live through them. Who are those people that have been a godly influence to you? They are the ones who have brought victory. They are the ones who have allowed Christ to live through you. As I close this morning, I think about something that I call shadow ministries. Shadow ministries. We don't all like to be a part of that. Because we don't get the credit We don't get the fame. We don't get the glory. It's behind the scenes. Nobody notices what happens. And yes, we need those people who get the credit. We need those people who are doing things at the front side that people see. But things that people do for God that no one notices is what I think about when I think about shadow ministries. Even though nobody else notices it, 
God knows. God knows what goes on behind closed doors. God knows what goes on in our hearts. And He blesses those influences if they're for Him. This way, when a man dies, he doesn't receive his reward then. Man doesn't die when he dies. Man doesn't know what he does when he does something good for Jesus. Because the influence of that deed goes way beyond earthly life. When we allow Jesus to change who we are and let us be an influence in the world around us, like the apostles, like Peter, like John, those things go far beyond. Peter didn't know that those people who were laying on the mats and the cots were there just so that his shadow would cast over them. He wasn't getting the credit for that in his brain because he was just walking to worship. But the influence that he had caused those people to want to bring their sick friends, their lame brothers and sisters, and lay them at his feet so his shadow would pass over. Church, do we want to have that kind of influence in the world around us? We can if we'll trust Jesus and let him use us. Our positive influence can outlive us. Don't let your influence be destructive Use it for victory for Jesus. Let us pray this morning. God, we thank you so much for today. God, we thank you that we have the opportunity to live a witness for you. God, that we can be children. God, that you use for your purpose, for your glory, for your fame. God, let it not be about us. Lord, I know I've made mistakes all throughout my life. I still make them today. But God, I hope that the things that I'm remembered for are the life change that you used me for in other people. God, I hope the way that I'm remembered is by the way I treated my family. God, by the way I love my church family. But ultimately, God, the way that I love you and let you use me. So God, let our influence be one that brings victory, brings life, but not death. Lord, I love you and I praise you. And it's in your gracious and and heavenly name that we pray today. Just a minute, we're going to sing the words to a song called Living.